The whole life of Christ is going to the Father. And as a matter of fact, he is the first of the brothers, bringing all the brothers to the Father. Now, uh, yesterday I said that surely we have the scripture and is uh, one of the biggest treasures of the church. But he said, I promise you not the scripture, I promise to send you the spirit, no? And Christ is present in our midst through his spirit. He becomes present uh, in the church. And But what is the spirit? Now, before we we move to today's gospel, to today's passage that we will be looking at. Uh, I would like to quote uh, these verses from uh, the 16th chapter of John. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the advocate, the paracletos, will not come to you. If I don't go away, the spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, when the Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. It's, it's very important. He will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. These three things, the Spirit does uh, this clarification. Concerning sin, concerning sin, you know, what is sin? Miss the goal. Sorry? Miss the goal. Miss the, goal. Miss the mark. Miss the mark. Yeah, this is good. In, 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 yes, in, in Hebrew is miss the mark, yes. And, well, but uh, I, I don't know, what, what is the essence of sin? You know, the essence of sin, in all the, in all the biblical perspective, on, on, in the consciousness of the people of God that has been matured throughout centuries, is, is not believing. This is the sin. It's, it's serving false gods. Then the others are sins and are not important things. If you do something wrong or if you are weak or if you, if you give up into, in, into, in, in, into some... Uh, limitedness or whatever. These are the sins which are, yes, important, but we have given, mor moralistically, we have given too much importance to the sins and we have given for granted that we are believers, yes. But the sin is not believing, the sin. And, and in fact, he says, concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. It's, it's, in, it's curious, this. Righteousness, because he is going to the Father. What, 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 is, what does this have to do with righteousness? Because he's going to the Father. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So this world has a ruler, the enemy of God, and he has been judged. And we know that the judgment to the ruler is given by Jesus on the cross. There, he has set us free from that ruler. He has taken the sentence for us and he rules in mercy now, no more in, 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 in the justice of the law. Um, this spirit then operates in the community of the followers of Christ, but after he has gone to the Father. It is so beautiful, the fact that Christ didn't consider us incapable, you know? Oh, you need me all the time. Poor you if I don't stay there. Uh, if I am not there, you will not make it. You are miserable. You are limited. You do things wrong. You cannot. No, he says, I have to go. I have to go because I trust you. I will send you my spirit and you will do it. You will go your way. You know, the church, the community of the followers of Christ, is a community of people in whom Christ has put his trust before we have trusted him fully. He says, I have been with you. You have seen my style of life. Now you will make it. Surely not alone. I will send you my spirit and then you will go ahead. Now the spirit of the Lord is the spirit that 
reminds us that we have a Father. And that moves our steps towards the Father. Because this is the whole essence of the life of Christ, going to the Father. And today I would like to uh, take into consideration uh, a passage from the 14th chap 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, uh, verses 11 until the end, 43, or I don't remember now how many verses has that chapter. But we will read it verse by verse slowly. Um, this is the lost and found son or the prodigal son or whatever, the merciful father, the title of the parable is this one. Um, and is Jesus who is uh, telling the, the, the parable. But uh, what happens in the beginning of, of the, the first verses of this 15th chapter of Luke? Scribes and Pharisees are there and they notice that Jesus is staying with sinners and, he, and they say, but he is staying with sinners and he is eating with them. Eating with them is even, staying with sinners can be more or less okay, eating with them that's really the worst, because if you eat with someone, it means that you share ideas, that you are in communion with that person, that you have friendship with that person. In, that, in, the, in, in, the, in Middle East mentality, eating with someone, it means that you agree with someone. You, you're fine, we're at peace with someone. He's eating with sinners. This is scandalizing for them, no? And the, the scribes and Pharisees are not sinners. They, are, they respect the law of Moses, they are okay, they are fine. They're religious people. They, they never miss a Sunday Mass, they, 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 don't, uh, they sing well in the morning prayer, and uh, they, they do things very nicely, yes. They confess regularly, and, I don't know, whatever. They do, they do their things properly. No? And, uh, and Jesus is staying with people who, who don't do things properly. So he's, he's dangerous, no? Now, <clears throat> uh, before I move into the parable, before I enter into the parable, uh, I would like to remember this, that concerning this objection that they, the scribes and Pharisees and priests, always uh, uh, move towards Jesus, there are many ways in which Jesus tries to make them understand that what you are doing is dividing the world into two. And as a matter of fact, Jesus tells many parables, or there are many occasions, in which two apparently contrary things are told parallelly. Let us say, um, the prayer of the sinner and the prayer of uh, the, the Pharisee. The sinner, the tax collector, uh, the Pharisee says to the Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord, because I do nothing wrong. Thank you, Lord. But as a, ma as a matter of fact, he's saying, Lord, thank me because I am good. I mean, this is deep down uh, the feeling of, of the Pharisee. So the Lord has to thank him because he has been good. You know, I deserve your blessings. You have, you have to, to recognize this, Lord. And, and the sinner says, Lord, I, I'm not worth, but I live on your mercy. Have mercy, have pity on me. And uh, Jesus tells also the story of Martha and, and Mary. He goes to their house and one is very good, is generous, working in the kitchen, preparing lunch and serving and doing things, etc. But then what she does is complaining for her sister. Oh, but you don't, you don't care for me. She's doing nothing to help me. Complaining for the sister. And you know the Pharisee, what, he, what is he doing? He's saying, I am not like the others. I am not like the others. No? Me and the other. Me and my sister. No? And, what, uh, and, and then we have other, uh, other, other passages from the Bible. We have so many passages where two things are put parallel. The two houses, Luke 6, the Gospel of Luke 6. There is the wise man who builds the house on the rock, and there is uh, the less wise person who builds the house on the sand. And yes, so these parallel, uh, these parallel figures, uh, we see them in the final scene of the gospel before Jesus' death. The good thief and the bad thief. One who says, <laughs> uh, 
Well, if you're a son of God, come down of, of the cross and, and save us, save yourself and save us. And the other who says, why do you say so? We are suffering a just condem condemnation and he's done nothing. And he says to Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. No? So we have these figures, these antagonistic figures, going, running uh, through the whole gospel story, through the whole earthly life uh, of Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus has come on earth to help us know the Father, no? and bring us to the Father. And what was the big mistake of the humanity and what remains the big mistake of humanity and of especially of religions. The gospel is given, has been given to us to free us from religion. Don't misunderstand me. D don't misunderstand me. Religion very often uh, is set up on rules and on dogmas, we have dogmas, I'm Catholic, so I'm, I have nothing against religion, I have nothing against dogmas. Uh, I don't want to be misunderstood by, by what I'm saying, but uh, we have these truths, these truths that are uh, formulated, and then we have a moral that sh should be obeyed, and then we have rights that should be followed and respected, and these are good things, these are not bad things. But these things very often end up by managing God. We are the managers of God. We manage God. So what is religion? Is a form of putting God under control. Is a, a form of, of, of directing God. It's kind of being we, those who tell him how the Lord should be. Religion very often turns out to be such a stuff. But why do we want to manage the Lord? Because we want to manage people in the name of the Lord. This is the point. Manage people in the name of the Lord according to the set rules of religion. The gospel goes all the time, all the way against this. And speaking of Mary, she has taken the better part that will not be taken away from her saying of the sinner, he went back home saved. Saying of, to, the, to, to the repented uh, uh, evil maker at the cross, today you will be with me in heaven, in the kingdom. Uh, these, these sentences of Jesus are clear. What is he doing? He is freeing God from our power on him. He is kind of, God is free, it's not the he that he is freeing, but he is freeing our image of God. He is correcting, restoring. He is repristinating the true image of God. And everything that Jesus does and says during his ministry is to help us understand that God is different. You have an image of God, God is different because he's a real Jew. He remembers one of the biggest commandments of the Old Testament, don't make any image of God. Because in the moment if you, in, in, in which you make an image of God, then that <coughs> image will serve for you as a power to control God and control others in the name of God. So be free from those images of God that very often and very easily we create in the name of God and in the name of religion. Now, today's parable is, today's parable of, of the merciful Father helps us to understand what really happens uh, in the human history. Now, this, this parable uh, is the third in a row of three parables in which two words are uh, key. Lost and found, lost and found, lost and found. There is a, a shepherd who has 100 sheep. One is lost in the first verses. And Jesus says, which shepherd wouldn't leave 99 in the desert and go and look for the lost one? Which shepherd would do that? No one would do that. Jesus' question is a little bit weird because he said, which shepherd wouldn't leave in the desert 99 
to go and look for one. No. A reasonable shepherd would say, no, at least I have 99. I keep these. Shepherds wouldn't, wouldn't go uh, in search for, the, for, 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 the, for one if they have not been sure that the 99 are safe. But it's, 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 this already tells something about a particular logic that is not human and is not based on profit, on quantity. It's based on that one, that one is important. No? I cannot take care of the 99 and okay, say at least 99% is fine. That one is missing, no peace. That one is missing. And then, and then make feast, you know? He finds the sheep and he gathers all the neighbors to make a feast, celebrate. So lost and found and make feast. Then there is this lady who loses the coin. She finds the coin, she finds the coin and she also invites her neighbors to make feast. Lost and found and make feast. And then she tells this long parable. This parable of the so-called prodigal son. Now, Jesus is answering with these parables to that objections, to those objections of the scribes and the Pharisees. So the, let us not forget this. He is sitting with sinners and eating with them. You know, eating with sinners, sharing life with sinners. And Jesus tells the first parable, the second parable, and now this third one, we will take it in, into consideration a little bit a little bit more detailedly. Answering to, the, answering to the Pharisees, and he said, there was a man who had two sons. Again, this is really Luke. And the younger of them said to his father, the younger, and normally the younger is the, the more rebellious one, the one who uh, take, wants to take a little bit more freedom, the less mature one, the one who is not calculating very well, he's, so he's free. You know, you know, spontaneous. Uh, the younger one says to the father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. What, what belongs to me as heritage. Give me my share. Give me my share. And the two sons, the two brothers, now start a way of separation. You know, we will understand that slowly, slowly, if he brings us to the father, he brings us back to the Father in order that we may recuperate our brothership. Because losing the Father, we lose the brothership. And this is the point. This son, this son now, wants to go away from the Father, but in the meantime, directly, is getting separated from the brother. And this is the drama of humanity. And this is the essence of sin. If you lose the Father, if you lose God, you have lost your brother forever. There is no way to be brothers if you lose the father. Then we will be, we will be competitors, we will be enemies. We can be also, we can be also uh, partners or tak, how do you say it in, in, in English? Partners maybe, I don't know. Joint, joint venture, you can, we can put together a joint venture and you can have your share, but, but you are no more a brother. Brother means having everything in common because we belong to the same father who is uh, the, the, let us say so, the owner, using a very poor term. Um, and you know what says the Greek word, and he, the father, divided, here it is translated, his property between them, but ton bion, divided their lives, their lives, their, their life. He divided, split into two their life. And living divided lives is exactly the consequence, the most dramatic consequence of sin. He divided their lives, practically. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living, Zon asotos. This word asotos is used only once in the New Testament and only here. He was living a life without any care. I don't care of anything. 
Don't care. Be happy. You have you have seen, have you have seen these T-shirts? No. Don't care. Be happy. Don't worry. Yes, without worry. Don't worry. Be happy. And you know, but this is a nice aspiration. Heaven is this. Don't worry. Be happy. It's paradise. It's heaven. We're all agonizing for this time. It's a good thing. So those who have written those uh, those slogans, they have they have understood what is our need, what is deep down our desire. And this younger son, he wants not to care to be happy. This is his whole desire. Don't worry, be happy. Completely the contrary of the bigger son, completely the contrary of the scribes and the Pharisees that are at the origin of this account. They say, you have to care, you, you shouldn't be happy, you have to never sin, you have to always do the things properly, be careful because God otherwise punishes you, he's, oh, he's ready, you did a mistake, yes, to hell. You were good, okay, you, you did a little mistake, well, a little punishment, a big mistake, a big punishment. This was the mentality, and this is any, every religious mentality. We have done such images of God, so poor images of God. And this younger son says, I, I don't care. I don't want to care. And he goes away. He is the representative of every sincere heart. And if you are sincere, you don't tell me that you wouldn't like this. It's, it's, uh, we, we, we would like to live carelessly and happily. It would be so nice. And, and he goes to, li to live this Zon Asotos. Careless, don't worry, careless life. <coughs> when he had spent everything, a severe famine, famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. The point is that, the point is that this is not possible forever, alone. I, when he spent everything, then how can I live longer anymore? No more sources, no more means, no more, no more, no more uh, possibilities. No, what I do? It was nice. I enjoyed. It. it was fun. But now, and the misery is described very well in the Gospel of Luke because we know Luke was a, a, a master of, of narration. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. So you become a servant, a slave, he was a son and he was a brother. Now he is no more son and he is no more brother. He is nothing. It was nice to live a reckless life, it was beautiful, it was heavenly, you know? And the concept of sin doesn't have nothing to do here. The sin is now having no father and no brother. This is the point, having no brother and no father. So, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. You know, Hebrews, pigs are, are unclean. Animals is really the worst of the worst. Couldn't, couldn't do worse than that. He, was, he had to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate and no one gave him anything. Where you are no son, they don't give you things for free. Where you are no brother, you have to gain everything, you know? You have to deserve things. So he went into a situation which is really the, the, the utmost consequence of having lost the source of life. But when he came to himself, and this is a very important verb, when he entered into his self, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. So he remembers something good of his father. Something good, not everything, but many of my servants of my father, they have bread. This is it. 
we go to the Father because of need. You never claim that we go because we are good. Uh, we are just sons. We have feelings of justice. No. This is the real sinner, the one described in today's parable. He doesn't say, I did a mistake. No, he said, I am hungry. <laughs> he doesn't say, my consciousness tells me that I, so since I have a right consciousness and I follow this consciousness, this consciousness will bring me to the Father. No, I want to survive. I want to survive. There is no merit in any of his actions and thoughts. Is a pure sinner. And Jesus is, is describing a pure sinner. A pure, even pure, sincere. sincere. And the sinners are pure. <laughs> You remember this, sinners are pure. Saints probably are not quite pure. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I will arise, I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. I am not worthy to be a son. And the father doesn't answer to him, but speaks to the servants. He wanted to be a servant. Now serve him as a son, is the symbol of the son, and the symbols are the symbols of the son. The son goes to the father and he is simply a son, he is not seen as a son, as a transgressor. And it, it's interesting because this chapter of Luke uses the same verb also for the sheep and for the coin, which cannot be really uh, not in that sense, no? And it, what, what is what is sin? Sin is 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 practically the the consciousness of being nothing without God. And what is salvation or redemption? Is knowing that you cannot be nothing if you are with God. God creates you from nothing again. The redemption is being all the time created anew, all the time renewed in His love and His grace. Time, five minutes. For my son was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. And they began and they began to celebrate beautiful the feast of the father and the servants and the young son. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. He was angry and accused him. He was just. He was right. He never sinned. So he was angry. And he had an image of God in his head. It cannot be. It cannot be. His father came out and entreated him. The father comes out, always. The father is always going out to find the son. This time the other one, you know. The son who went away very far, in, 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 in a country far away, yes, he was far from the father, but you know, this embrace and this kiss. But this one is really much, much, much more far away. But his father came out and treated him, but he answered him, Father, look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. I never went to church every Sunday, to confession, never ate too much, never uh, went around doing my business, never, no. Yet, you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. You know, um, 
religious people very often can be angry with God and say, even God is unjust. Right. Yeah. Yes, we do things for him, but he is not quite good. He is not quite good. Because why others who steal and etc., the others are happy, who do all the, all, all, all the worst things in the world, and we are unhappy. We live according to God's will. And why? Why he lost his son? Why I lost my son? I always go to jail. I do things to him. And the others who do all the evil things, they are fine. You, have, you ever, have, you, have you ever heard this kind of, of mentality? Why all disgraces fall onto good people? And evil people, they never suffer disgraces. This is typical mentality of people who have a certain image of God which they want under their control and power, at their service. God at my service. He is. He is. We know that He is at our service. But He is serving us His way, not our way. These many years I have served you, I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, the son of yours. Now he is always showing a distance to the father. This is your son. It's your distance. You are such a God. You are such a father. This son of yours came. Who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fat and calf for him. We never know how he dealt with his money. But his brother already knows. He's been with prostitutes. <laughs> so, the, his deep desire of transgression goes into his mind. So, the real man who went to the prostitutes is him. Because in his mind, he has the prostitutes. Supposing that his brother did that, and he, poor guy, he didn't. He was suffering there. But as, as a matter of fact, he is prostituting himself. So, but when the son of yours came, who has devoured your purpose and properties with prostitutes, you killed the fat and calf for him. And he said to him, Son, son, he always is a son. You are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. This is life with God. All that is mine is yours. We have everything. And you know what is the thought that ruins our spiritual humor that we think that we have nothing. All that is God's is ours. Faith tells us this. We have everything in common with God. All that is yours, all that is mine, is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. Why? Because this, your brother, he answers to the, to the son, to the father, because the father says, your son. And he says, not my son. Son, you are my son. But this, your brother, remembering that you have a brother. Your brother was dead and is alive, was lost and is found. Now this parable is very important. Oh. Any any uh, passage of the New Testament that surely we are talking of this and that's why I'm saying this is important. It's uh, you use this to say, but okay, I said it already. Um, it's very important because its role is really to clean our images of God, to liberate ourselves from some religious concepts and some innate and spontaneous stance that we develop living in a church, uh, going through some requirements that the community justly and rightly so uh, formulates in time and gives a shape to, to the church life. And during this process of living a religious life within a community, we very often run the risk to freeze God in the religious concept that we develop inside our community. And then say, okay, we know who God is, we know he, what He wants from us, and we will satisfy Him sometimes. We will be a little bit unsatisfied ourselves, 
but at least we know that then we will be saved somehow because we have done things properly and good. Now, let us remember uh, the starting point. The starting point is that the Pharisees and the scribes accuse Jesus that he sits with sinners and eats with them. Now, the point is this, that very often we are kind of prone to uh, consider, to divide these two brothers, or the Pharisee and the sinner, or uh, the brother that says yo and does, that says no and does yes, and, and the other that says yes and does no, or Martha and Maria, we are very often tempted to separate them and make them as two physical persons that have lived some time in the history, etc. The point is that these two figures are always confused inside of our soul. And uh, to distinguish very well these two tendencies of our interiority is important. But we can make this distinction more clearly when, if we know what kind of a father we have and how is he looking to see us, running to embrace us and kissing us. So, who is God? Because based on who God is, we will decide who are we and who should and who ought we to be, who should we be. Because if we have a certain image of God, we think that we have to be like the older father, the older brother, like the brother, like the, the brother that says yes, but does no. This is a religion. Mm -hmm. Say yes, 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 I'm a believer, I do it. Mm -hmm. But deep down, you are no. Like Martha, you do many things, but always complain for the sister. We are good Christians, and the others are not good Christians. We are just complaining for everybody and for everything. And like those who build the house on the rock or on the sand, or like uh, those claiming for salvation, if you are the Son of God, save me, then you are no worth anything. One, the one and the other thief on the two sides of the cross. What image of God do we have? Christ, I said, is all the time going to the Father, to this Father, to this, not to a Father, to this Father. Um, yes, now we know that this can be a little bit scandalizing for many. Eating, sitting with sinners and eating with them. If we want, really, to give an answer to our silent question, are we Christians, then the answer can be given on, the, on this criterion. Do I, do I think that the other people with whom I'm sitting are sinners? If I do so, I am the real sinner. When Jesus was sitting with those people, he was not sitting with sinners. He was sitting with people. And people are only sinners. The bigger and the older brother. He's just sitting with people. And the sinners are saved because he's sitting with us. We are the ones with whom Christ is sitting. And Christ is this brother. That for me is not a sinner, is the Son of God, is my brother. This brother is yours, this brother of yours was dead and is risen, was lost and is found. Now I need all what I do to need, what, what, what all I need to do is find the father in order to find the brother. He is no more the sinner, he is my brother. And make feast, live happily, don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. With God, this can last forever. Without God, we end up feeding the pigs and cannot eat what they eat. <laughs>